Number 14, Texas Tech, takes on 17th ranked Houston from Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth. Along with Fran Fraschilla, I'm Mark Neely. Franny, Tech head coach Chris Beard has built another solid roster. This one features four key transfers. He has recruited very creatively out to the South Plains, and all four of these young men were key players in high-level programs before they arrived in Lubbock, and they are really excited about these guys. Mac McClung from Georgetown off to a terrific start so far. Well, like Tech, Houston's off to a 2-0 start with a strong shooting beginning from sophomore Marcus Sasser. They got a tremendous backcourt in, uh, in Houston, but this young man, Marcus Saps, uh, Sasser, a sophomore, returning home to Dallas. You saw 25 against Lamar last year when he came home against SMU career high 26. He has a lot of fans here to watch him play. Now Marcus Sasser last year, Fran, was the only true freshman on the Houston roster, so he's the only true sophomore on the roster this year for Kelvin Sampson. And set to go from Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth. Pat Adams, Terry Oglesby, Keith Kimball, our officiating crew, Texas Tech wearing the black, and Houston is in the scarlet. Tech with the first possession. You're going to see tough, hard-nosed defense both ways. And for Texas Tech, it's going to be about motion offense. Random movement, good ball movement. Jumper off from the free throw line. You saw Micah Peavy, true freshman, in the starting lineup again. And once again, Kevin McCuller is out for Texas Tech with a left ankle injury for Houston. Same starting five. And Quentin Grimes coming off a strong game. And from the corner, a three-point shot knocked down by the aforementioned Quentin Grimes. Kelvin Sampson told us this young man is starting to find a real joy for the game as a junior. After transferring home from Kansas, where he played as a freshman, Still taken the other way and unable to finish that Jerome. Good effort, good hustle by Texas Tech to get back on that play. Pass underneath left side and Tyler Edwards underneath and Micah Peavy, the true freshman. Yeah, this is another young man that's returning home out of Duncanville High School, played for his dad, one of the top 50 players in the country a year ago. Very smooth, watching him in practice yesterday. He knows, knows how to get in a defensive stance as well. Another three knocked down from the left side. This one by Justin Gorham. His first three-point shot attempt so far this season. Watch the ball movement and screening. You keep, keep your eye away from the basketball. You'll see a lot of cutting and movement by the Red Raiders. Shot clock slips under 10. Terrence Shannon from the left side for the sophomore from Chicago. Boy, yesterday, Mark, we watched him drill a bunch of shots in a row. That's an area where he's really improved. Left-hander, slick. The three from the corner off the mark from Grimes that time. On the run, Shannon gives it up. Back in the hands of McClung. He'll put up the three. Too long. Looks like Tech has gone. Looks like Chris Beard called out three. That's usually their zone defense. Both of these teams will lock in on the defensive end. And they get Bryce and Gresham with the offensive foul as he backed into Peavy. When you think about Texas Tech, the last three years, take a look at the action inside, and you see the extended right arm by uh, Gresham. But, Mark, Texas Tech has lost 11 starters in three years, including off of a lead eight team and a national championship game team. And they still have good players on this roster. Quick timeout. We'll be back in 30 seconds. It's more than just a gift. Come into Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's to enjoy the magic of Christmas at Santa's Wonderland. 
the tradition of a free photo with Santa continues. Make your reservation online today. Officials at the scores table, and Fran here, they're checking to see if possibly there was a flagrant foul committed by Bryce and Gresham as that elbow came up and seemed to get PB in the chin and in the nose area. Exactly. Take a look right there. Now, to me, that's inadvertent. You can still call that a common foul, but I don't think there was any, uh, any intent right here. And it was called a common foul. We'll see if they're going to add anything else to that, this official review. Now, Still when you're posting up like that in the, the lane, you know there's a defender behind you, and that's probably what they're looking at. If he turns and whacks that right arm back into the defender, I guess they could call it a flagrant one. But to me, early in the game, I didn't see any intent. That's just a common foul to me. Yeah, and that looks like that's going to be the determination from this crew. Pat Adams, Keith Kimball, Tracy, uh, Terry Oglesby saying it's just a common foul. It's Gresham getting an explanation. Yeah, and I think what Bryson did was he's allowed to post up. What you got to do is you got to get your arms perpendicular, uh, you know, with your shoulders, and you can't extend that right arm out, which is what he did, and he drew the contact. Both teams off to a two for four shooting start from the field, and Houston with the early lead. That shot by Shannon is blocked, and here comes the Cougars. A terrific defensive play by Gwynton Crimes. He is playing with great confidence. It's coming off a 25-point game, and then went over Boise State a couple of days ago. Sasser gives it up and off the mark. Yeah, they're going to let shoot that jump. Yeah, they'll let him shoot that three ball all he wants. He just won a six and three-point shooting so far now to start the season for Dejon Giroux. Pass from Marcus Santos Silva off the hands of Peavy and the other way a foul underneath going against Texas Tech. That's the first time we've seen Mark in the post. We call that a monster trap. You saw the trap come to Silva. What Houston does almost every time the ball goes into the low post is they will double team that post player with their four man. They call it the monster trap. And Texas Tech was aware of it. They practiced against it yesterday, but Santos Silver seeing it first time live turns it over. First trip to the foul line this season for Marcus Sasser, who hits the first to Chris Beard, season number five for him. And he has basically given Red Raider fans, Fran, the best basketball they've had in the history of their school. I'll tell you, you know, that the heartbreak of losing that championship game has not gone away yet, but this roster is loaded. And he has creatively put together a great group of kids, high school players, high-level recruits, transfers, international guys. Oh, and you come I within a basket of winning the national title, friend. I don't think that hurts ever going away, is it? Well, I don't think so, nope. Both teams are locked in, Mark. We watched the practice yesterday, scouting reports on target. There's that double again. Santos Silva trying to pass out of it. That ball batted around, and away with it comes Houston. Giroux. Three, Sasser. Got it. Now, this kid's been on fire. Of course, he's coming off a great freshman year. This is a terrific young backcourt that Kelvin Sampson has. Santos Silva on the drive shooting over Gresham, and Gresham may have got a hand on that. Throw a bullet pass. Drive sealed off. Kelvin Sampson with, with pro experience as an assistant coach in the league. He's got some NBA sets. Look at that. Wow. Sasser feeling it early. Back-to-back -back threes for Marcus Sasser, and Houston has jumped out to a nine-point lead. Loves, he loves coming home, Mark. Young man from Red Oak, Texas, south of Dallas, knocking it in. Home cooking for the Cougars early. With the Spurs and his nephew Marcus Sasser has scored the last eight points of this game for Houston. So an interesting storyline here. A former Texas Tech player, player of the year, and his nephew playing against Tech today. I think the question I have is how the heck did he get away from Chris Beard given how uh, how good a player he's been the first couple of years. 
But, uh, Jason, Jason played Lee. for, yeah, he played for Uncle. Uh, excuse me, uh, Marcus played for Uncle Jason. Of course, his other uncle, Gerald Sasser, was the first round pick of the Orlando Magic. He played at SMU. So, uh, great bloodlines in this basketball family here in the Metroplex. And, uh, Mark, you and I talked about this many times. This area produces a lot of great high school basketball in recent years. Yeah, no question. Seems like more and more four or five star recruits coming out of Texas and the Metroplex area specifically. Houston with the nine point lead. Sasser's been a big part of that. He scored their last eight. All four made field goals for Houston. Have been threes. Rowe brings it up this time for the Cougars. Gonna watch to see if there are any defensive adjustments that Chris Beard has made out of that timeout. Mills with a spin move, a little fade away. Edwards stumbles a bit. And so far, the Cougars locked into that uh, motion offense. From the left elbow, off the mark, Joel and Tomway. One thing you're not going to get if you're playing against Houston is a lot of offensive rebounds. This is traditionally one of the best rebounding teams in college basketball. Good ball movement, Grimes. He's going to pull up a long two. Calvin Sampson in his seventh season. This is season number 32 overall as a head coach for Kelvin. He's helped lead this program to back-to-back -back regular season titles in the American Conference. Absolutely. 83 wins the last three years. Great college coach before leaving Indiana. Amidst some controversy, went to the NBA for six years. And uh, Mark, he told us last year he was coaching in the NBA with the Houston Rockets. And his dad was his high school coach and a great coach in North Carolina. He'd call him after every NBA game, and dad said, you know, I know you like the NBA, but you really you belong in college. And uh, that really hit home with Kelvin. The next year, the Houston job opened up, and they made a great hire to bring him back. And uh, he's building a program with sustainability. It's Caleb Mills called for the offensive foul for Houston. Here's what's interesting about that. During the walkthrough yesterday, Chris Beard's coaching staff said Mills is a left-handed driver. He's a righty, but you have to play him for the lefty drive. And you can see that the scouting report was perfect. Texas Caleb Tech Mills trying is another to get it going. Yeah, he's another outstanding sophomore. He's had a bit of an ankle issue to start the season. In fact, did not play in the first game. Kelvin said he probably could have played in game one, but they held him out to be cautious. Here's Tech trying to snap a skid here. They've missed their last five from the field. And there's an offensive foul on the other end committed by Tech. Yeah, Jamarius Burton a little out of control. You cannot bounce the ball uh, with, without being judicious with it because if you try to make plays, Against all this help defense, you're going to run into trouble. And you see right there the Wichita transfer. A little bit out of control. You know, we've Justin talked about there, Sasser, but Caleb charge. Mills is the preseason uh, AC, AAC player of the year. So this is a terrific young backcourt. Long trying to back down, but Klong, it does so, puts it up with the right hand. Oh, he's much more comfortable as a senior this year after transferring from Towson a year ago. He saw the mismatch with McClung and went right at him. A tech turnover. Grimes trying to turn it into points at the other end. Off the hands of Gore, but he's able to chase it down in the corner. Yeah, this is an impressive start for the Cougars. They've been locked in on both ends of the floor. Driving Mills, hands off underneath, and that's blocked out of bounds by Santos Silva. It's going to be Texas Tech ball. Well, 
Tuesday night on ESPN in the app, we've got the 10th Annual State Farm Champions Classic. Number 13, Michigan State. Number 9, Duke. That's at 7.30 Eastern. And then number 6, Kansas, taking on number 10, Kentucky, from Bankers Life Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. Kentucky will be coming off a loss as they were beaten today by Richmond. No surprise, Richmond with five seniors, although one of those seniors out for the year, but that's an experienced, well-coached team. Chris Moody's got a team that's ranked in the top 25 in preseason polls, and uh, they pretty much handled Kentucky the entire second half. Texas Tech has been on quite a drought here. They've fallen down by 11. And yeah, they just rave two about of their first eight. Yeah, they rave about this young man, Micah Peavy, uh, in the Tech program. He is, uh, mentioned earlier, he played for his dad at Duncanville High School, the same school that produced Jemias Ramsey. And uh, he has great poise and maturity for a young player. Good defensively, sound offensively. I think Texas Tech fans are going to love watching this young man play. They won a Class 6A state title in 2019 as a junior. Of course, Ramsey was a senior that year. He was the MVP of the state title game. Out of bounds. We'll go back to Texas Tech. Can't give away those two free throws, however. And PB missed both. He's now 0 for 5 from the line to start his collegiate career. Cougars have locked in on Mac McClung, who came in averaging 19 points a game. The Georgetown transfer, who scored 1,000 points in two years in the Big East. PB from the baseline, got it. Really smooth move. Got to the baseline, couple dribble pull up. Second bucket of the game for PB. That breaks the drought. For Texas Tech. Look at every player's in the stands, both ways. Shot clock down to six. Mills off the glass. Crash to the boards, but a rebound for Marco Santos Silva. Best defensive possession of the day so far for the Red Raiders. Spin move, nicely done. Wow, PB, the freshman. How smooth is that? Moves. Yep. Very pretty. Went left on that last basket. This time span, spun back to his right hand. Now to five to shoot again. Terrell trying to create from the right elbow. Oh, Got it off. Didn't get it off in time. Tough move under duress. Just getting it off before the shot clock. But how about the freshman, Fran? Micah Peavy. Absolutely. Micah Peavy, part of a top 10 recruiting class for the Red Raiders. Young man coming home to Dallas, getting it done early. And Fran, the last couple of years prior to the season, they've had closed door scrimmages between their two programs in Fort Worth. And it's really developed a, a big bond between these two coaches and their programs. Both of these guys are old school coaches who coach toughness and accountability. And it's really interesting in the 2018-19 season, after the scrimmage against Houston, Chris Beard said to Kelvin Sampson, would you, would you talk to my team and give them some words of advice? And Kelvin said, listen, you guys are not in Durham. You're not in Chapel Hill or Lexington, Kentucky. You're in Lubbock, Texas. You can never lose that chip on your shoulder. Of course, that was the year that the Red Raiders went to the championship game, Mark. And the night before the championship game in the Red Raiders team meeting, they called Kelvin Sampson, put him on speakerphone with the team, and Chris Beard said, Coach, we never lost a chip all year. Thank you very much. And that's the kind of bond these two coaches have. They weren't excited about playing the game itself. But trust me, both teams will come out of this game today a lot better for it because of the competitiveness that each plays with. 
Kayla Mills with the bucket there, but Kelvin Sampson's team that same year that Tech went to the national championship game and Peavy making another move to the basket. He'll go to the line for two. What a team Kelvin had that year. They went to the Sweet 16. And they very easily could have been a Final Four team themselves, lost in Kansas City to Kentucky. But what a team they had with Corey Davis, and Galen Robinson, Armani Brooks, and Brady. They, they yes. were a monster. Well, you know, the beauty of both of these teams this year in 2021 is that there's a sustainability here that both, both coaches have created in their programs. Neither team won lucky the first time they started winning at, at Houston and Texas Tech. It's through hard work and then finding players, Mark, that are going to buy into being coached every day. Kel you know, Kelvin has said this, and I really believe this. You're only as good as your best player allowing you to coach him. If you can't coach your best player hard, then you're not going to have the kind of team you need to have. Both of these coaches can get on a Jarrett Culver or an Armani Brooks or this year Marcus Sasser. That, that's that's accountability in coaching, and neither, both of these guys have that. Well, no By the way, every time, I see violation. Those, every time I see those black masks, I think of Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> <laughs> well, Texas Tech yeah. has made four field goals, but they've turned it over seven times. Struggling from the free throw line as well, and as a result, they're down 11. He makes it look so easy with the stroke by Caleb Mills. We talked Marcus Sapser in the open, but Mills coming off an ankle injury. Remember, there's a reason he's preseason American Conference Player of the Year. This kid had 20 plus eight different times last year as a redshirt freshman for Kelvin Sampson. That's why this backcourt is so dynamic. Here's an open three. He went off the mark. Terrence Shannon Jr. and Tech still struggling offensively and Houston's quick three, no good, but a whistle. I'm gonna get a foul away from the ball on Tex Marcos Marcus Santos Silva. One of the you know why he picked up Yeah, you know why he picked up that foul? Because of, watch the relentlessness of the shot going to the basket. And you see Justin Gorham hitting the backside. Another point of emphasis when you play uh, Houston. This is one of the more ferocious rebounding teams in the country. You have to keep them off the offensive glass. Yeah, he pushed Gorham all the way off the court. Santos Silva has come out. Nine minutes to play first half in Fort Worth. A 22-9 lead for the Cougars. Mills again on Shannon. Grimes. Oh, this is so good to see. You know, we watched Quentin Grimes as a freshman at Kansas, and he didn't, he played with so much pressure on him and didn't play with joy. And Kelvin said to us yesterday, this is the first time in a while he's been on a team two straight years. And he told him he's got to have right joy away. for the game. From Shannon, yeah, no question. You look at Quentin Grimes, who was a five-star recruit. And underneath, another foul going against Texas Tech. One of the worst things that happened to Quentin Grimes at Kansas was early in his season. It might, it might have been his first or second game. The season opener 20, against Michigan State. Yeah, 21. And you know what? Every uh, The mock drafts had him in the top 10 lottery pick. And there was so much pressure that year, Mark. We watched it firsthand. Every jump shot was squeezed out of his hand. Last year, there was an adjustment period as a sophomore. But this year, you can see a, a certain, uh, you know, uh, pep in his step. Really enjoying playing this year. Back home in the Houston area. Sasser provided most of the scoring early for Houston. Grimes has picked that up and a drive in a bucket again from Quentin wow. Grimes. I am surprised. In fact, I'm stunned that they've gotten off to this start against Texas Tech. This is a team with four or five really good guards. We haven't even talked about uh, Tremont Mark yet. And McClung falls hard to the court. You mentioned it earlier, Fran. They have put a bullseye on Mac McClung to begin this game, keeping a close eye on him. But it's an 18-point lead for Houston with under eight minutes to play in the first half. 
now for Houston, and they are thriving with a 27-9 lead with under eight minutes to go. Clung one of those transfers for Texas Tech. They have locked him up tonight. He, he uh, is getting a taste of Kelvin Sampson defense right here. The young man from Gate City, Virginia, right on the Tennessee border. And Mark, there's a few guys, and listen, there's so many good transfers in college basketball, but here's a few I wanted to point out. I just saw Carl Eek Jones from Louisville. Absolutely outstanding. And of course, Joey Hauser, who you'll see Tuesday night in the Champions Classic. He just had a double double for Tom Izzo last night in a win over Notre Dame. Well, McClung able to knock down both free throws. He's not missed a free throw yet all season. He's hit all 10 that he's attempted. Trying to get Tech back in this game. Drive, Mills. Nice block. Right into the arms. Texas Tyreek's Tech. Good. Yeah. Tyreek, yep. We got the red shirt freshman in the game, and now here comes Tech. And Quentin Grimes. Slow to get up underneath the basket. Well, that started with a great defensive stop by Tyreek Smith, the redshirt freshman from Baton Rouge. And then we just talked Mac McClung, and he started to get it going a little bit. He just landed on that left ankle. And remember, this is a team without Fabian White, the starting center who's out for the year. Good sign. I'll walk it off, Quentin. What a good first half, otherwise, for Quentin Grimes. Eight points. He's hit a couple of threes. Houston is a team's hit five of their eight three point shots. Grimes going off a 25 point game. Yeah, you know, we watched him in Kansas. Bill Self coached the heck out of him. You know, he's really fortunate. He's had two great coaches. Uh, but I felt every time he shot a jump shot at Kansas, he was he was thinking it was an eight-point play. And of course, he elected to come home. He was granted a transfer waiver as a sophomore. But this year, he's really comfortable. Sasser on the drive, pulls up, throws it up, hits the front rim, able to get it back, and Sasser scores. Offensive rebound. Good job by the Cougars keeping it alive. Point of emphasis yesterday for Texas Tech, keep them off the glass. Chris Beard said something interesting when uh, they were talking about that yesterday. He said, they shoot it to miss it because they treat the missed shot like a pass to themselves. So you've got to keep them off the offensive glass. Well, my conversation with Chris Beard yesterday, the first thing he said when I said, what, what concerns you about Houston? He said, huh. rebounding. Tyreek Smith cleaning the glass that time for Texas Tech. Another one of those good-looking freshmen. Edwards with a three-point shot. And that's another guy that's come home to the DFW Metroplex and has become this team's team leader as a junior. We haven't called his name very much today, but uh, certainly a big part of this Texas Tech operation. Drive by Jerome, Gorm a rebound, kicked back out. Lined up by Mark. Another rebound. Third opportunity, and this time an offensive foul against Houston. Yeah, Mac McClung taking did a good the charge. Job. Yeah, he saw that. He saw the ball coming at him, and he got great position. You know, we talked to him yesterday, and uh, I thought he was a good but an inefficient player at Georgetown. Shooting percentage was low. He chose to come to Texas Tech. He said, I wanted to be coached hard. I wanted I want someone to scrutinize my game and make me a better player. And that's what he's done coming out to the South Plains. It's also one of the things Chris Beard mentioned that he wanted to see McClellan improve on being more efficient from the field. Offensive rebound. Santos Silva. Well, that's what he does. He's averaging a double-double young man from Taunton, Massachusetts. He is a long way from New England. And you see Chris Beard sporting the beard, by the way, underneath that mask. 
Let's watch this effort right now. Watch Santos Silver get, get to the glass. And although PV kept the ball alive, the young man from uh, the VCU transfer uh, gets it done. Mark, he reminds me of Norrence Odiasi, who played on that Final Four team. He is just a garbage man. Watched him play AAU basketball for BABC up there in Boston. A great program that's produced so many players. And another guy that wants to be part of something special. And his effort fits Beard to a T. And the lone senior on the Texas Tech roster. Coming up Tuesday, 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on ESPN and the ESPN app. It's the exclusive reveal of the college football playoff top 25 rankings. Reese and the guys break them down from top to bottom. We have coaches' reactions as well as a live interview this week with committee chairman Gary Barna, who's also the AD at the University of Iowa. You know what a definition of a well-coached team is? Tell me. Is when you're not coaching and they still win big and that's exactly what happened yesterday with Alabama Nick Saban because of COVID was home watching and they just put an annihilation on their in-state rival offer really impressive job by the Alabama coaching staff and players rolls around and in it's a sweet drive right there is that the, that's the freshman Tremont Mark who they love Tremont Mark ESPN four-star recruit <laughs> I'm laughing because Kelvin Sampson let him have it yesterday. You talk about tough love. He said, I love this kid. He's going to be a great player. But he said he has not gotten into a defensive stance yet in two games. <laughs> Here's one of the freshmen for Texas Tech. And Amari Burnett got caught up along the baseline and turns it over. Free throw line jumper oh, up and in once again for Tremont Mark. Oh, they're going to love this kid. He is a Kelvin Sampson guy. He's one of those Houston area kids. You know, Kelvin has said, we're going to recruit inside out. We got enough players in Houston to build a great program. We'll build from inside the city and then work our way out. We've gotten three of the last five Guy Lewis High School uh, Player of the Year guys on that roster have played for him. Shot clock's down to two. And a travel before the shot from Burnett. Oh, just when you thought Texas Tech was starting to build a little bit offensive rhythm, friend, uh, suddenly the Houston defense firing again. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Report, we got action from around the top 25. Also, Richmond took down Kentucky. We'll break down what happened there. Sean, what do you see in this game so far? Uh, to me, it's about Houston's defense. I mean, their ability to create live ball turnovers and be able to score off of it. They forced 11 turnovers. It's equaled 15 points. And it's made it easier for them on the offensive end. They're shooting at a high clip from behind the three-point line. And holding the Texas Tech Red Raiders at 25% from the field. Franny, Mark, back to you guys. Yeah, to your guys' point, uh, Texas Tech has turned it over 11 times. And Houston is 5 of 10 in three-point shooting. So they've opened up this 33-18 lead with three and a half minutes left. And they've got good shooting like that throughout most of this first half as well. How about this kid? Traymond Mark out of Dickinson, a Houston suburb. Coming off the bench. You know what impressed me about him in his first two games? He shot 17 free throws. They hit 10 of 13 from the line in their opener against Lamar, trying to save it along the baseline, and Mark does so. Boy, this defense is locked in. I am surprised. I, uh, I am just absolutely surprised that uh, Houston has taken Texas out of Texas Tech out of everything. Jarrell off the back rim, and the rebound this time pulled down by Kyler Edwards. Yeah, John Jarrell, he, he gets into the paint. They'll dare him to shoot that, but... Uh, Really can't argue with the overall offensive performance so far by the Cougars. Edwards in the corner. He got pushed by Grimes. By the way, Mark, did you hear the savvy uh, analysis back in the studio with uh, Sean Farnham and our newest colleague, uh, Danny Manning? Yeah, Danny Manning. Yeah. Good to have Danny with us this year. I watched Danny do amazing work with those Kansas big guys. You and I both saw it yes. through the years for Bill Self, and uh, he did a great job with Olivier Saar, the transfer that went to Kentucky. Although Kentucky lost today, he's going to be a big factor. 
Very impressive. Danny, welcome. Tech missing the front end of a one and one. If we're going to claw back in this game, down by 17, they got to improve from the line as well as they've struggled from the stripe. It's two of eight. It's a little zone now by Texas Tech, just trying to change the tempo of this game because the tempo has been all coups. Sasser short with the long three and the long rebound, battling for it. PV as well as Mark, so a couple of true freshmen going after it there. Well, another offensive rebound opportunity for the Cougars, and this time Mark, who, watch this now, this is a long rebound, so this is just one, two, this is a 50-50 ball. And you see uh, the foul on Peavy, and uh, Kelvin told us yesterday, this kid Mark is like a Swiss army knife. He said he's not great at one, any one thing, he's good at a lot of things, but I gotta tell you, we watched Kelvin just absolutely get on him yesterday for not going hard on a, on a loose ball. Made him run up and down the court. There's another offensive rebound. Grimes going back up, had it stripped. Tech the other way. And Clarence Nadoldi in the game for Texas Tech off the bench. Right now, Chris Beard, he's got so many weapons on that roster, but uh, none of them have done anything really to cut into this lead, so the only getting a chance. Look at this defense on McClung. McClung foul before the shot went up by Sasser. Delvin Sampson said, I don't see a foul there. We were, we were moving our feet. I thought that was great defense. Sasser picks up his second foul with just over a minute and a half to play in the first half. But he's had a fine first half, 10 points to lead the way for Houston. And a couple of threes. You know what, I, I have so many favorite quotes from both of these coaches. One of my favorite Kelvin Sampson quotes is, when it comes to practice, your head coach, your best player, and your point guard can never have a bad day of practice. And, and this guy, this guy coaches with so much passion and has had so much success. Started at Montana Tech where he drove the bus 10 hours for road games, Washington State, Oklahoma, Indiana, off to the NBA. And then he found a second uh, opportunity to go back to college at the University of Houston. You know, I've said this, Mark, to a lot of coaches. If there was one coach in the country that I could spend a year with, if I was a young coach and learn how to coach the game and coach effort and intensity along with the X and O's, it would be Kelvin Sampson. And the reason I say that is because he's won at difficult places, and he's won without star players. Now, he had some good players at Indiana. Of course, we know how it ended there with NCAA violations and the show cause order, but he is a grinder. And uh, to get the opportunity to go back to college and build this program again, I think is uh, pretty cool. They are the preseason favorite to win the American Conference in the second straight year. And this team has had an outstanding first half and has kept a very good Texas Tech offense relatively in check. Oh, I don't think he could ask for anything better. This this has been total domination by the Cougars in his first 20 minutes. And actually, I'm anxious to see how Texas Tech responds to come out of the gate because you know what that locker room is going to be like. Yeah, it might be a. Uh, oh, they're going to talk about competing. Peeling. Trust me. Yeah, they will talk about competing. Chris Beard will. Houston shooting just under 30, uh, 50 percent from the field. That is, but Tech just seven of twenty. Jarrell lost it. Grimes stepped on the sideline as he was able to scoop it up. But it's Texas Tech ball, and McClung's slow getting up. Well, Tech right now, this is a good uh, two for one opportunity right here. They can get a shot up around forty or so. They'll get two possessions, but it's got to be it's got to be good looks. They need a couple baskets here to cut into this lead. One minute remaining. One minute. 
You slip under the one minute mark here in the first half. Spin move to the baseline, around and out. We're in Tomway, and now a chance for Houston, but they did get that shot off uh, with a chance to get a two for one here. Attack They'll get it back. They'll get it back as long as they block out on the defensive end, which is not a given against this team. If you're Kelvin Sampson, you've got to be thrilled about the first 20 minutes. There's another rebound. Kept the this is their Grisham. MO or their DNA, whatever you want to call it. This is practiced every day. When you play Houston, you know you have to keep them off the offensive glass. Cougars can hold it for the final shot. Giroux, the floater going up off the hands of Gresham. Final seconds loose. That goes up in time with counting. That falls away no good. So a 37-19 lead for Houston here at the break in Fort Worth. Let's send you to the studio for the E-Trade halftime report with Dal and Sean and Danny. Second half. The 18-point lead for Houston does equal their largest of the game, and they were paced in the first half, leading all scores. Marcus Sasser with 10. Well, the young man from Dallas has returned home and uh, picking up where he left off last year when he dropped 26 on SMU in a homecoming. That was a loss right now. Marcus Sasser, the catalyst for a great first half by the Houston Cougars. Houston 17 points off a dozen first half turnovers by Texas Tech as you see the numbers Fran if you're Texas Tech I mean this is these are two top 20 teams it's early in the season but you're down 18 at the half what's the approach starting half number two first of all I want to see who Chris Beard starts in this second half does he go with the same five guys who got off to a very slow start but from a coaching standpoint he not only tried to make some corrections in the locker room at halftime, Mark, he also made a point about talking about effort. And when I was in situations like this, which was rare, by the way, um, <laughs> but when you're down 18, what you're trying to do is tell your team, listen, let's just get it to 10 by 10 minutes. Okay, if we can get it to a 10-point deficit with 10 to go, we are right in this game. Kids have to learn to believe you because we've seen comebacks before from a Texas Tech team. Let's just see how they react first three minutes out of the gates. Houston in the scarlet, they have the ball to begin the second half, and Fran, it does look like the starters are back out there for Texas Tech to begin the second half. I am anxious to see how they play the first three to four minutes of the second half. And if you're Houston, you cannot let up off the gas pedal. You've got to continue to play tough, hard nose defense, continue to rebound. Got a mismatch. Sasser has to pick it up off the court, flip it up with the shot clock expiring, and going to get a foul and a push on Bryson Gresham. Well, what I liked about that is Santos Silva was switched on to Sasser. Chris Beard yesterday said, look, when we switch and you're on an island, you just got to guard the first two dribbles and we'll help you. That time, Santos Silva did a great job of keeping Sasser from exploiting the paint. Well, let's see what the Red Raiders can do on their first possession of half number two. Uh, I think Mac McClung's got to get going. He's been a, a key guy for this uh, Red Raider team first two games. 19 points a game. Five in the first half for him. He missed all three of his three-point shots. And Peavy put them off on the right foot in the second half. Yeah, he's, he's really comfortable off the dribble. A little token pressure right there at Nuisance Press after the basket. Yeah, I would expect fire and brimstone from uh, from these Red Raiders to start this second half. See if the message has been sent. Backer missed by Jerome, a one and done for the Cougars. You'd be surprised, Mark, how easy it, it, it or how, I should say how hard it is to play with a big lead. Well, you wanted to see more from McClung. He puts up a quick shot, and he has seven, and that's a quick four points off the deficit. 
It, it, what, sometimes when you've got a large lead at halftime, it's human nature to just catch your breath and relax. I always felt when we had a lead at halftime that the first four minutes of the second half, if we were up 18, I would tell them, I want to be up 22 at the first TV timeout. I don't want to give away an 18-point lead. Nice runner that falls in. Sasser's now nice picks pass. up the dozen, but they forgot about Peavy. And he's been the top scorer today for Tech. He's the first in the double figures for them with 10. There's a good example of Santos Silver, who started the game sloppy versus that double team. That time found Peavy on the cut to the basket. Excellent execution by the big guy. Santo Silva guarding Grimes. Finds a wide open Giroux. Well, they're leaving him open by design, but that time he made them pay. What's your point? He hasn't shot the three ball all that well to start the season. No, sometimes a 200 hitter hits a home run. You know, you have to just live with that. That's the percentages you play. There's that double again. Good ball movement. Well, Peavy didn't take the shot from the free throw line, gave it up, and Shannon missed from longer range. Good execution by Santo Silver that time. Rhymes again on Santo Silva and almost lost it, able to keep it alive. Sasser off the back rim and underneath. I want to tell you something, that's another foul. It was a good box out, but Justin Gorham has been working the backside of the glass for the Cougars all game long. The transfer from, from uh, Towson. Watch on the backside right now. You see, oh, I mean, they ought to check this out now because there's a little bit of a hook and hold right here. I'm not sure the officials have spotted this yet, but I thought there was a little hook and hold that, uh, that Gorham got away with, and they're not going to got to play on. They didn't review it. So the foul one against Edwards. Coops maintain possession on the drive. High off the glass. Around it. Out. Offensive rebound, though. Back for Grimes. There it is. Again. Houston, it's in their DNA. And another good effort play by Quentin Grimes. in the game. Chibuzo Agbo, one of the true freshmen. Maybe that's a, a spark they can find off the bench for Tech tonight. Well, he's a really talented kid from the San Diego area. He, play, he can shoot the ball and he plays hard. Again, on a deep roster, you're just looking to find guys that click on a given night. Eighteen footer, Jerome. Well, that's big, and that's where he operates, Mark. He gets to the basket as a slasher, and eighteen and in, he can knock that shot down. He gets it off his off his own. Going to get the blocking foul on Jerome there, and we come to a timeout. Bulls home for the holidays. So look at Kelvin Sampson cutting down the nets. The last two seasons, they won the regular season in the American. Two years ago, went 16-2, and two, won it by themselves. Last year, part of a three-way tie. And that's uh, regular season titles number eight and nine in school history. Right out of the timeout, a McClung three hits the back rim. Oh, good Rice. challenge by Santos Silva. They've got to cut into this deficit. Santos Silva, the lefty, and one. Great effort, coast to coast by the big fella. This is a young man that had three productive seasons at VCU for Mike Rhodes and decided to transfer and very much a part of this scheme. Good energy, good effort. Hits the offensive glass, and that time you saw him with the energy to run the floor after the block shot. It was an 18-point lead for Houston. Tech had four quick points coming out of the locker room, but still a 16-point lead here for the yep. Cougars. Exactly, and you don't want to squander that lead. And again, if you're if you're Texas Tech, if you can just be a 10 
With, the ten, with 10 minutes to go, you're in, you're in pretty good shape in terms of mounting a comeback. But so far, Houston has not really allowed the Red Raiders to carve into that lead. Oh, that's big. The confidence this young man is playing with is good to see. Came back home to Houston after, a, I, would, I would say, an up-and-down rookie year at Kansas. Oh, no, great effort. Jerome. Jerome. We'll shoot two. Well, this is the Houston's. kind of energy you want to see. I, I yep. told you, Mark, it's not always easy to play with a big halftime lead. And what the Cougars have done is they have not let the Red Raiders back into this game. It's been timely shooting and ball movement, but also solid defense. Here's another one of those transfers we talked about. He transferred along with Bryson Gresham from UMass. They both grew up in New Orleans. And of course, when you talk Houston and New Orleans, you got to talk about that Kelvin Sampson coaching staff because Quanis White and Hollis Price, two of his assistant coaches who were the backcourt on the o Oklahoma team, you see those guys right there. And uh, White and Price, two New Orleans guys, have, uh, have done a great job of helping Kelvin Sampson. You see right to the left of Kelvin is Kellen Sampson who is likely to be the next head coach at Houston. But I'm not sure Kelvin Sampson's going anywhere just yet. No. Well, his team's opened up a 20-point lead, their largest of the game. Skip pass, Edwards. Good challenge by Grimes. Look at, the, look at all five moving as one. Tough shot. Tipped out by Santos Silva. Boy, the, the impressive thing when you watch this Houston team play defense right now is all five players are moving at once, and defense is about multiple efforts. Little zone now off the inbounds. And off the catch, Jamarius Burton. Another one of the transfers out of Wichita they, State. They caught, yeah, they did, Mark. They caught Jarrell uh, sleeping on the backside of that zone. They went zone underneath, and Jarrell was not alert. Hardest part about coming back against Houston is they have great guard play. Three or four guys that can beat you off the bounce. Trying to trap Jerome, and he needs a timeout. And a little bit of John going on afterwards. And coaching staff pulls back Jerome. And <laughs> tempers flaring. That's called competition right there. Timeout, 17-point lead for the Cougars here in feisty Fort Worth. And Santos Silva, a little bit of extracurricular at the end of this play, Fran. No question. Not only not only the officials, but watch the teammates. See, this, this is one of those uh, events that could escalate into something that we don't need to see. Now, Santos Silva, he's just trying to get his team going. Dejan Giroux is a highly competitive guy. You know, we talked about a lot of things he does well, and one of them is he competes. But I love the way the players and both staffs got in between them, and then Kelvin Sampson did some coaching in that huddle. But I love this, man. Look at this. Two guys who respect each other. They know what's up. Red Raiders have not played well tonight. They're trying to get back in this game the way they always do with tough, hard-nosed play, Mark. But Kelvin Sampson's guys didn't back off either. That was that was good all the way around. The officials were good, the teammates were good, and it did not escalate. Officials did take an extra look at it during the break on the monitor to see if there was any flagrant activity. There was not. Yeah, nothing. Just two teams fighting, competing, at least fighting in the, in the sense of playing hard. Sasser short with the 17-footer. Ball bounces oh, yeah. around. Oh, yeah, Still get on that loose. floor. Bodies everywhere, and they're going to tie oh, yeah. it up. And then behind the, the play, it was looked like a little something extra going on on the back side. They may this. They may, they may have to review this because of PV or someone else there at midcourt. And it looked like PV for Texas Tech. Yeah, let's watch now. Now, this is just great hustle both ways. Now, you expect this from Houston and, and Texas Tech. Now, watch the guys at midcourt right now. Whoa. Okay, now, 
they're going to have to go check this because Justin Gorham now getting tied up with Peavy. They're going to take a look to see if Gorham stepped on Peavy, and if he did it on purpose, there'll be a flagrant one right here. But overall, this is just good effort. You see Chris Beard right now is talking about, look, we may not win this game, but we're going to keep battling, okay? And again, Mark, you know, again, I know 17 points sounds like a, a, a hard mountain to overcome. Kelvin's talking about poise right now. He said, look, we're winning. We're playing good. Don't lose your poise, okay? Don't give them a chance to get back in this game. Chris Beard is the opposite. We can be back in this game. Take a look at midcourt right now, and I want you to watch Justin Gorham. Now, is that on purpose? I'm not sure. Does he step on him right here? I don't think so. So it's the first act by Gorham. Otherwise, I don't think we have very much. You know, when I watch that, friend, you see Gorham as he's getting up. His right leg, he kind of extends it a little bit. It he almost does. makes it look like he's making a move to make contact with the head of PV, but then it just extends, and it's hard to tell if he's just getting up or if he's just very carefully disguising a way to That's get his right. foot the first, the first the move, let's see, what was, you know, we're not courtside, so we can't tell, and normally Keith Kimball would come over and tell us, and I don't think we have anything. I like that. It's good officiating right. right here. Play on. Yep. But you know, about 15 years ago, after I yeah. refereed at the uh, Big 12 officiating camp I, I once asked an official if anything crazy happens will you come over and tell me because we don't have to guess and uh you know it's become part of college basketball now that the officials will give you a good explanation by the way texas tech has gone zone just to mix things up and look to change the momentum a little bit Peavy. Excuse me, Houston went zone there. Yep. Tech was good in the zone offense. Play. By Gresham, gives it up. Sasser from the corner. Uh, he's an assassin. That's exactly what you need to keep this Red Raider team at bay. And they're back in that 3-2 zone again, coming out of the timeout. 15 this is for a Sasser. Great, yeah, Mark, a great overall performance so far by Houston tonight. They have not, forget breaking, they haven't even bent yet. Cougars back to a 20-point lead. Edwards, Santos Silva, and a rip right away by Gresham. You know, this is a team that doesn't have your standard pure point guard. All these guards are more wish, combo guards, scoring guards, but boy, do they play well together. They had Galen Robinson Jr. for four years, and he was the purest point guard they had. Giroux fade away from 17 in and out. Gresham had it, but Gorham comes away with it for the Cougars. One another more offensive, offensive rebound. rebounds. Yeah. yeah. It, it is it is absolutely something they they eat, sleep, and drink basketball, but they live for offensive rebounding. Did not get that off in time. What impresses me about Houston, Mark, is that I've said this, and, and I did have a lot of big leads when I coached. Hard to keep a big lead unless you play hard. And this team, under Kelvin Sampson, they play hard. Take a look. Houston, Texas Tech, they're coming at you. Monday Night Football is a battle of the birds. Russell Wilson and DK Metcalf lead the NFC West leading Seahawks into Philly. They take on Carson Wentz and a desperate Eagles team. 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN, Deportes, and the app. Russell Wilson just turned 32, and uh, that offensive line's got to protect him a little bit. 18 sacks in the last five games. Let's go, guys. It's getting old. Seattle needs to play a little defense, too. Yep. A little 2-2-1 two -two pressure off of that basket. Well, 10 points to deficit with 10 to go is look likely not going to happen, Mark. So let's just see how Red Raiders continue to battle. I was just about to say, Houston was up 18 at the break. They're up 18 right here and can't add to the lead. I think one of the most underrated things in coaching a team in a game is how you prepare for the first four minutes of the second half with a big lead. And they came out ready to play. But all of a sudden, Texas Tech trying to cut into this lead now. We'll see if it's too late or not. 
Mac McClung with that athleticism, highlight reels, and high school YouTube videos. Well, it was the game high score their first two games of the year. 20 points against Northwestern State, 18 against Sam Houston State. They love him. They love his energy. He reminds, he, he reminds the coaching staff of uh, Matt Mooney, who we, we, we grew to love in that one year he played for Chris Beard and helped uh, lead this team to a Final Four in the national championship game. Matt Moody, I remember, is a guy who told me that year, he said, you know, I very rarely played defense before I got to Texas Tech. Exactly. And he wound up being a Big 12 all-defensive performer. Oh, he was a great defender. Remember, he had like the 6'11 wingspan for a guy 6'4". Yeah. Yep, absolutely. Tariq Owens as well. There's a little trapping right now. Trying to speed the game up a little bit. And Calvin Sampson said, no, we're not speeding the game up. Not with four guards out there. We're going to play at our pace. Which is what you can do when you play with uh, playmakers. One of those guards out there is Trevon Mark. He's on the right side, number 12. And they're going to get McClung. Fouling Sasser. Pretty good defense by Matt McClung. Not happy. Well, we've mentioned throughout this telecast, Fred, how close Kelvin Sampson and Chris Beard are. And their programs, it's almost kind of like looking in the mirror. And they've had yes. the closed door scrimmages the last couple of years. Weren't able to do that this year because of COVID. So a lot of the players on the floor right now haven't experienced the closed door scrimmages that these two squads play. And it's gotten uh, a little chippy at times in this second half. Well, and you expect that, you know, I mean, this is not a good Texas Tech performance. They're not happy with the way they've played. So they're, they're trying to compete like, like, like they are right now, trying to get back in this game. Listen, I've seen 17-point leads lost before. It was a good job by the, who's that, Terrence Shannon, yeah. Sophomore from Chicago. You know, the problem with uh, trying to come back in this game is that Houston has not cracked, given them a crack in that door yet. I mean, they got 36 points, the Red Raiders. Team that scored 101. Granted, that was against Northwestern State in their first game, and 84 against Sam Houston State. And Smith got knocked down in the lane after that shot. Yeah, I'm watching. I'm watching that Texas Tech bench, and they they may be down 17, but they are into this game. Coaches, players. There is a, you know, we say culture. Culture is an overused word, but they have a competitive winning culture and uh, we said Mark before the game the, the loser of this game is going to learn a lot about themselves and be better for playing a game like this Tyreek Smith hits the front end of the one on one after the eight team follow the half for Houston and there you see that Tech uh, team yeah I think the problem for Chris Beard really early in the season is He's got 13 legitimate players. He's got no Kevin McCuller tonight. The sophomore from San Antonio was a big part of their success last year. I'm not sure it's going to be easy to figure out who his top 10 are. Yeah, McCuller rolled his ankle, left ankle, so out again. And Chris Beard trying to get the Tech fans that are here. Oh, how about this crowd? They're into it right now. Drives can't quiet the Tech fans, the one and done. Got to play a little faster now. When you're down 15, you got to have a comeback game. You can't be as judicious as far as ball movement. You have to play a little quicker and throw caution to the wind. That means not passing up easy first shot opportunities as opposed to moving the ball and exploiting the defense. One-on-one for Mac McClung, who had hit his first 12 free throws of the season before missing two of his six today, and he hits the front end. So four on Giroux puts him on the Houston bench. Well, he's been such a catalyst for this team today defensively. I'm anxious to see how they react right now. Hey, you can see now the energy him. and effort of Texas Tech right now. Just watch their bench. You see how engaged 
that entire group is. A center two, two, one pressure for Texas Tech. Yep. Oh, they got him. They oh, yeah. Back. They came with a little 2-2-1 two, two, pressure, and they baited Sasser. When he got to midcourt, they took away passing outlets. Really well done. Well, they were down by as many as 20, have cut it to 13. It's still just under nine minutes to play in Fort Worth. In this terrific matchup, number 14, Texas Tech, number 17, Houston. A little bit of a touch foul, but they're going to call it. Jamal Shedd, who missed the last Houston game with non-COVID illness, uh, just a regular run-of-the-mill cold, and back and able to play tonight. Well, he's going to learn that in order to keep a, an opponent at bay, you don't want to put them on the line where they can score with the clock stop. That's what was so big about that foul by the freshman. Right now for Texas Tech, it's all mental. And there you know, if you, if you want to know what four to one is when you see it on the shirts and the jerseys, Chris Beard, this is an old Bob Knight saying, the mental is to the physical is four is to one. And right now for Texas Tech, it's about the mental approach. Red Raider Nation has gotten into this game. And Kelvin Sampson is trying to orchestrate good offense from the sideline. It's going to stay with the Cougars. Chris Beard's team charged deflections, and you say, well, what's a big deal about a deflection? It's a sign of energy, and right now, what it also does is it, it, gives, it gives Texas Tech a chance to only have to guard the next eight seconds. Down under five. Here they come. Offensive rebound, back out. Oh, taken right away by... Gresham. Actually, that's Cheney. How about that? And McClung needs help getting up. Reggie Cheney, the transfer from Arkansas, who hasn't played much tonight. That is a key stop. You, you talk about a basket right there and get to single digits. And Reggie Cheney came up with the stop at the rim. Young man from Tulsa. Take a look. Now, this looks like an opportunity to score. And here's the... There's the foul right there by uh, Matt McClung. Another quick foul on the inbounds against Texas Tech. Three fouls on McClung. And now Terrence Shannon also with three for Tech. Under eight minutes to go. 11 point lead in the ball for Houston. Houston's going to spread the them Texas out. Tech fans. Yeah. Nailing defense. Step back three. He traveled first. Hang on, Mark Neely. What's going to happen these last seven minutes and 46 seconds? 20-point lead for Houston has been trimmed down to 11, and Texas Tech starting to feel their mojo. You said it was a wrap with about 10.52 to go. <laughs> no, you know better. I know, I know one thing, if I had Danny Manning on my roster right now, I would give him the ball and triple team him, leave Farnham and Cuff wide open. <laughs> we are not letting Danny Manning get good shots right now, okay? We're, we're going to play the percentages, Mark Neely. <laughs> a stinging rebuke. It's just a good, oh, it's just good coaching right there. Well, it's a great trio. It's, absolutely. It, it's a 9-0 run here for Texas Tech. Down 20 at one point. Now 11. McClung just flips it up after the contact with Sasser. Batted around. Good and no used call. The ball. Good no call. McClung tried to bait the defender into a three-point foul. And he jumped into the defender. That's a good piece of officiating right there. And that's another good piece. And that's a and fresh foul. Mark. Mark. Yeah. But Texas Tech doesn't want to squander these opportunities to score. Yeah, 
Well, the turnover's starting to even out a bit after Tech really bitten by the turnover bug in the first half. It's been a while since Tech has gotten it down to single digits. It was an 18 to 9 lead. And here you go. Yeah. Mike Capini with the slam. Good night for the game. Burton. Yeah, break down and pick and roll. And again, that's what we talked about. When you're down like this, you've got to play quicker and faster and be on the attack more. You can't play side to side as much when you're trailing. You've got to play east west to the basket. Again, the last time Tech was this wow. close, it was an 18 to 9 Houston lead. Too much one on one right now by Houston. Three Grimes. We're going to get the foul on Tech. And Gresham was going up for the rebound. Boy, how many times today have Gorham and Gresham crashed the backside of the of the of the offense? Take a look right here. Here's pick and roll right in a little slip inside. Breakdown by Houston. And Micah Peavy with the finish at the rim. Mark, the one thing we know in basketball is that when a shot is taken, 75% of the time, it's going to bounce to the opposite side. And what Houston does a great job of is they crash the back side of the glass. Shimon Mark hitting a big front end for Houston to try to stem the tide. And ends the scoring run for Texas Tech. Tell what I like about this young man. He's about to shoot his 20th free throw of his career in a little under three games. So this is an aggressive young player. I love this. 15 of his first 19 free throws, so he's got a pretty good percentage too. Yes. You know, Dejan Giroux was coaching his is uh, he was coaching, I think it was Marcus Sasser from the bench. Big free throws. True freshman hits both, gets it back to an 11 point lead for Houston. Can't be afraid to shoot the ball quickly if it's a good shot. Edwards in a crowd, fouled by Mark. Yeah, I love this. It started out as what we call a horn set. Two bigs out top screening. And again, another breakdown by Houston. And Kyler Edwards able to get to the basket. Yeah, but this is, look at the coaching going on, okay? This young man, Mark's going to be a tremendous player. Kelvin Sampson loves this kid. But he's not a, what did we say earlier? you got to be willing to coach your best players. And, and, Tremont Mark is eventually going to be one of Houston's best players and one of the best players in the American Conference. And you can't be afraid of confrontation because you're helping them get better. Kyler Edwards misses both, and it stays an 11-point lead for Houston. But taken away at midcourt, Shannon. That defense is, ra is ratcheting up. Look at Shannon. Look at the energy now by Texas Tech. And look at their bench. Everybody is engaged right now. This game will come down. Run. Yeah, Mark, it'll be Houston's poise in the backcourt. Tech is finally locked in. The drive with the left hand. No, tip. Here comes Edwards, and a whistle. Wow, now, something happened on the baseline, and there's an injury. Now, here's the rule, okay? If a player is injured, even though Texas Tech had the ball, it used to be that we played on until Tech, until Houston came up with a possession. But by rule now, last year changed. If a referee feels that a, a, a player's injury could cause him harm, or it's a serious injury, they can blow the whistle. Take a look right here. And it looked like McClung swung, probably by accident, and nailed Sasser in the face. Take a look at McClung now. They got to look at this. You know, to me, he's playing the ball, but the follow-through certainly makes contact in the head area. 
Well, Sasser shooting that ball, so the question, I mean, really he got fouled. Yes. By getting swatted in the head, and that, that wasn't called, and then the play went on as he was down beyond the baseline. They want to see if this is a flagrant foul by Mac McClung. Hey, a reminder, the Big 12 now at ESPN Plus, a must-have for Big 12 fans. The Red Raiders play Abilene Christian December 9th at 6 Central, 7 Eastern. Then the women play Mizzou on December 10th. Plus, you'll get over 40 men's basketball games this season. So if you're a Big 12 fan, got to have it. Sign up today at ESPNplus.com slash Big 12 now. Sasser looks to be okay. And Kelvin Pleat in his case. Hard to tell what they ruled here because we are not courtside. Sasser knows he got hit, so what they did was they stopped the play. They had zero, they had nothing. And what it did do is it stopped a Texas Tech fast break. So Kelvin wanted a, a flagrant one. They played on, Tech remains with the ball. And again, now you gotta have a comeback offense that plays quickly. McClung trying to break down Giroux, but that is swatted away by Gresham. We have a technical foul. Wow. And this is the poise we talked about. Gresham with a great block and were their antics afterwards. Keith Kimball. Keith Kimball trying to sort it out now. You see the coaching staff. There's the block. Now, it looks there like a taunt. Did they call a goaltending on this? Well, definitely a. Well, it was a. It was a. It was a. It was a. Uh, uh, obviously, it was a dead ball technical foul. Yeah. After the play was stopped, what Keith Kimball is explaining right now is it was unsporting like. So there was some taunting involved. Let's take a look now. There's the block, which is clean. Yeah. Yes. And he probably said something right there in front of the official. Take a look. Watch his mouth. And, he, and, and the official is watching him. So Bryson Gresham is a senior. And Mark, we talked about this. You cannot squander a lead by losing your poise. And that's where Houston is right now. So two free throws plus the ball. So it's a seven point game. Avery Benson has checked in for Tech. Driving oh, a big miss. Fall for Shannon. Yeah, that could have cut it to a five point deficit. Oh, big miss. Big miss by Terrence Shannon right at the rim. And Shannon picking up the defense on Jerome. Yep, Jerome back in with four. Grimes will go to the line. Good aggressive play right there by Grimes, but Houston has kind of put the offense on ice. They're killing time, they're isolating, spreading out. And while it's good with this lead, it's not how they got a 20-point lead, but when you coach in a game like this, it's about survival. You just want to win. You don't want to come down the court and jack threes up. First free throw of the game for Grimes. He's short with it, so he's now six of eight from the line on the season. Well, Tech has gotten themselves right back in this ball game, Fran Fraschilla. Still five minutes to go. Score is taking one of the attention. <laughs> we got everything going on.
All right, they got that sorted out. One more free throw coming for Quentin Grimes. One to two, eight point lead for Houston. Texas Tech has shot almost double the amount of free throws as Houston, but haven't shot him as well. McClung, 18 footer. It's about poise, Mark Neely. Every time Houston does something good, they make a bonehead play with the lead and give Texas Tech a chance to score with the clock stop. there for McClung. Missed them both. Grimes with McClung on him. Short to the 15. Shot. Tip. Edwards. Tried to give it up to Peavy, but yeah, it goes too much over. passing. Yeah. To Houston. That's what we talked about. You got to be able to play fast, but you can't overpass. I thought Edwards could have shot fake, driven it, pulled up. Instead of trying to make the, uh, the home run pass inside, better to just put that ball up and shoot it. Listen, Houston has lost their poise, but Texas Tech has not really responded in the last couple minutes. Kelvin Sampson has been in this situation many, many times. And what he's doing right now is he's milking some clocks, but he's got playmakers out there with the ball. Foul stops it with 3.43 to go. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Phillips 66. Well, we talked about Texas Tech needing a comeback, and now we're going to figure out whether it's a little too little too late. It started down the stretch. They were down 20, 47-27, when the defense ratcheted up, and they got out, got some easy baskets, made some key plays, and now they're still in that comeback game. But uh, I think it, I'm not sure, Mark, that they didn't start this comeback a little bit later than they needed to. And Houston's, Houston's been living at the line here. Cougars haven't had a field goal since the 12-27 mark. You see the biggest comeback last 30 years for Tech. You got to go back to 97 against Nevada when they when that 17-point comeback, trailing by 16 at the half. They were down 18 at the half here today. Both free throws good for Sasser. Well, we knew Texas Tech wouldn't quit. That's not that's not who they are. But uh, they also haven't taken advantage. I thought of, of some some lack of poise on the part of the Cougars, and that will be addressed by Kelvin Sampson. And Peavy may have just fouled out of this game. Mark, I'm going to tell you what Kelvin's going to do the next time they, they practice and watch tape, which will probably be tomorrow, is he's going to show them how well they played. And do you remember the Giroux Santo Silver scuffle at midcourt? Yes. And we talked about keeping your poise. And he's going to explain to them that we can't do this during the season in a critical game at Memphis. We have to be able to be under control at all times, regardless of what happens. He's done this hundreds of times. He's seen this before. He's going to be thrilled about the first 30 minutes. They've dominated the game, and then he's going to make sure the lesson is sent about not losing your composure. By the way, they haven't down the stretch at the foul line. Not at all. It's kept him 
has kept Tech from making this a two or three possession game. Horn stays perfect from the line. The only thing he'll do is he'll celebrate this win. He will celebrate this win with his team, and when they get back to the uh, practice floor tomorrow in the film room, they'll they'll make the adjustments. Good call. Travel. Yep. Good effort Tyree by Smith. Yeah, Houston loaded up on that little dump off pass to Smith, and he didn't gather himself. 17 tech turnovers. Oh, and believe me, Chris Beard will use this tape tomorrow as well. They play St. John's on Thursday at home. This is why you want to play tough opponents. And why these two friends decided to play here in, in Fort Worth. Sasser kicks to the corner. Grimes, did he get it off in time? Well, he must have. They play on as that ball hit the front rim. He gets it back. Well, how about the effort? How about the effort on the offensive glass again? Quentin Grimes helped to his feet. He's done a nice job on the glass. Mark, I was just thinking rebounds. that. You know, hey, you know, he played for a tough coach at Kansas and Bill Self. We saw it the whole season. I felt as a freshman he played, he played in a tuxedo. He, you know, he played the game in a tuxedo. Now all of a sudden he's playing in work overalls. It's a it's a different guy, you know? No it's a question. guy that was in the lottery in these mock drafts, and it was unreal, unrealistic. But since coming home to Houston, he's bought into the, t the culture. He would have done the same thing had he stayed at Kansas, by the way. It, it would have become part of his DNA, but it's become part of it back home. Some guys just don't want to get the tuxedo sweaty. Uh, Houston's last eight points have all come from the line. They've only missed three free throws of their 16 today and make it four. Just about two and a half minutes to go. Switched in by Edwards, timeout tech. 11 point game. Well, Tuesday night on ESPN and the ESPN app, we have the 10th annual State Farm Champions Classic, number 13, Michigan State, and number 9, Duke, open it up. And Cameron Indoor at 7.30 Eastern. And then it's number 6, Kansas, and number 10, Kentucky, from Bankers Life Fieldhouse in Indianapolis. Should be a couple of great ones there, Frank. Yes, it will. And Kansas coming off a, a win over St. Joe's and that loss to Gonzaga. When I went back and watched the entire game, as you see the preseason poll, which will, you see how many teams have lost already. But Mark, I thought Kansas, you know, I, I, I expected a blowout when I went back and watched the replay and they were in that game with five or six minutes to go. They yes. will get better and better. The one thing I concern myself with Kansas is who's gonna be the takeover guy? Who will be the guy that can go get you a basket? They could throw it into Doak last year. They could give it to Dotson, he played downhill, but don't worry, Kansas is just fine. They this are fine, but it's, team. it's hard to replace at. Azubuki, who was about as unique uh, a player in college basketball as there was last year. I think he probably was as underrated as any player in America last year, even though he was a first-team All-American. And the big fellow was a first-round pick. Little pressure now by Tech, 2-2-1. Two, two, they got to turn it up a little bit, and there's a foul. Gonna send it right back to the line for two. Both teams in the double bonus. Again, Houston's missed their last 10 shots from the field. They haven't had a field goal since the 12-27 mark. It's been almost exactly 10 minutes. Yet they are up double digits. Yes, they are. They are they are living at the line down a stretch. And this young man looks like he's gonna live at the line for his whole career. It's one Jermon thing to go Moore. to the line and hit 65%, France. Another to go as a freshman and hit 80-85. Yeah. One and two there. Deep three. It's off of Mark, so it's going to remain with Tech. But the Tech deficit is a dozen with just 2.16 to go. 
Talking about getting ready for American Conference play, the next uh, the next major Power Five opponent that uh, the Cougars will see will be Frank Martin, South Carolina Gamecocks. So it's another team that's going to value battle you every step of the way. Yeah, that'll be Saturday. And they open up conference play December 15th against Central Florida. And you mentioned what's ahead tell you, I watched SF, I watched SMU practice a couple weeks ago. That was a team that was, uh, it's got a lot of pieces back. They, Tim Jankovic has got a good team. And you see the upcoming schedule. They'll go to Alabama as well. Houston, the preseason pick for the second straight year in the American Conference. Memphis also had some first place votes, picked second. And you mentioned SMU. They're picked third, Cincinnati fourth. The preseason poll in the American. And Tim Jankovic has done a really good job replacing a great coach in Larry Brown and battling back from unbelievable NCAA sanctions. And he now has a program he can call his own. They, they were winning big last year. They'll win big again. This team went to Moody Coliseum last year, came away with a W, Houston did. You mentioned Texas Tech's next battle is the Big East Big 12 battle on Thursday. From Lubbock, you and I will have a chance to, to call that as well at 9 Eastern. You're on ESPN2. Then they have Grambling State on the U. Handling Christian, Texas A&M, and then get used to it, folks, for this uh, new world that we're in. Conference play begins in mid-December, and for Tech, that means Kansas, December 17th. Absolutely. That's become a really good rivalry, in part because two great coaches compete at the same level. And by the way, Mark, you know, I had a chance to say this. I am so glad college basketball is back. I know that the safety of the players is first and foremost, as well as the staff and the spectators. But every coach I talked to in the last two weeks, and about 10 to 12 of them have said, our kids just want to play basketball. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can keep these guys safe. Protocols are in place, but uh, you're not going to hear me complaining about college basketball this year. I'm absolutely ecstatic that it's back. We'll take whatever we can get. <laughs> That's exactly right. Two minutes to go. And you know Dallas is my home, so I'm going to have a very short trip to the kitchen tonight. McClung there to take the charge. Again, these are teaching moments for Kelvin Sampson. You see Jerome now talking to that freshman, getting him to understand that that kind of turnover to a 12-point lead might not hurt you, but you do that at SMU in a one-point game, and it could change your season around. And a chance for a three-point play. I haven't said a lot of Jamarius Burton's name today. He gets a chance to cut this to single digits. Well, he was a good player at Wichita before he transferred. He was even going to redshirt this year. But with the new rule allowing uh, players a fifth year and the uh, one-time transfer rule coming into effect next year, Chris Beard and Jamarius decided to... Uh, Let's play it out this year. And he's got pretty good bloodlines, that guy. A lot of sports people in his family, a lot of basketball, football. All right, it's a nine-point game and a quick foul. Stops it with a, a minute 38 to go. Tech looking to elongate the game here, Fran, but Houston, at least to this point, has shown that they're more than capable at the line, and they continue that. Yeah, and, and you know, this is still a good teaching point. Uh, I had a team once come back from down 12 with a minute 50. And, and part of it was we practiced it just about every day. We practiced, we had a scrimmage, we had a drill we called down eight, three to go. Down eight points, three minutes to go. And we did it every day in the second half of the year. And so even now, Chris Beard is coaching this situation because this is gonna happen at times during the season where you're down three, four, five. And you're gonna coach every possession until the horn goes off. There's never enough teaching points, especially in the non-conference. And the true freshman just hit two more free throws. The last 11 points for Houston have all come from the line, and, and that's their lead right now. It happens to be 11 points. And we just got an illegal screen from Marco Santos Silva out at, mid, out at the top of the key there. Third foul on Santos Silva. You and Houston I still hasn't had a field goal 
it, since the 1227 mark. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't matter, right? They've just taken no. care of the, taken care of the ball and made their free throws. We're gonna have fun in the Big 12, Mark. Oh, no doubt. This league is top to bottom loaded. Cougars eating some clock. It's down to five. The shot clock. Got it off. Would have counted, but wouldn't go. Pass ahead. Burton has it knocked away. They say it went off. Houston. They could take a look at this if they want. Don't apparently need to. Don't want to. Stay with Tech. <laughs> don't want to. Don't need to. That's called, that's called good officiating right there. Substitutions now for Texas Tech. They waved the white flag. Wholesale change. Live to fight another day. This, you know, this is normally done behind closed doors when these two teams scrimmage. And when I talked to Chris Beard yesterday, he said, look, we don't like to play friends, but both of us feel a game would get, we'd get a lot out of it, win or lose. And Chris Beard said that when there's three or four people he can call at midnight during the season and ask for advice, Kelvin Sampson is one of those three or four people. And that's saying something right there. Because you know coaches are all awake at midnight. <laughs> they don't sleep much. No, trust me. And Chris Beard sleeps less than most. Long three with the shot clock expiring. Raise the rim. And final 20 seconds. So this top 20 matchup between 14th ranked Texas Tech and 17th ranked Houston. Fran, Houston never trailed in this game, and just when you thought Tech may break through and make this a game, Houston did what they had to do, made their free throws at the end, and they go away with the win. They got the first punch in. They did. In a, in a street fight, you have to get the first punch in, and there you see the two coaches embracing. They'll, they'll wish each other well, and they'll root for each other during the season, Mark Neely. So Houston 3-0 for the second time in the last three seasons as they win it 64-53. to That's going to take care of things from here for Fran Frischilla and our entire crew. I'm Mark Neely. Thanks for sharing this one with us. Let's send you to the studio.